Hello everyone, this is Vittorio, CEO of Bot Society, and today I'm going to show you how to create an interactive mockup of your chatbot. Now, everything that I'm going to show you is going to be applicable also to voice interfaces and any type of chatbot. Why would you want to design a chatbot? Well, if you design a chatbot before actually building it, you're able to do all the sort of validation and decisions that uh, you may want to do before actually committing to building a complete bot. You can figure out the best interaction possible, the flows, the personality, you can have a preview, you can even have, and that's what we're gonna see today, users using your design, just trying it out to get a sense of how final users will use it even before you build it. So that when you sit down with your engineers and you uh, end up building your bot, you have a very detailed, effective design and your chatbot will be way better compared to just rushing to building it and then discovering that it doesn't work, having to go back. So uh, this is what I'm gonna show to you. Um, so let's jump into it. First things first, uh, sign up on Bot Society if you didn't do that already. Uh, it's free to start and I've already done it. And so now I can pick the channel that I would like to design for. I'm gonna pick the first one, which is used to design for your own app or website, but you can pick pretty much anything, follow the same steps. Everything is just gonna work in the same way. So I'm gonna pick this and now I'm gonna click on start designing here. And now um, I'm gonna start designing my uh, chatbot interaction. Now, uh, there are other tutorials about how to go about designing a chatbot, so I'm gonna skip ahead and do that. If you're uh, interested in understanding how to best design this chatbot, click on the link that is gonna appear now, and we're gonna show you all the basics of conversation design. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna skip it and go straight to the interactive mocap part of this. All right, let's do this. All righty, so here we go. So I came up with this design, uh, it's called Coffee Bot, and uh, I can quickly show you how this goes. Basically the idea is that uh, the chatbot is helping users uh, pick up stuff and uh, specifically coffees and uh, what I can do is uh, as a user is I can order it beforehand so that when I get there it's ready I just have to pick it up and I divided my interaction in different let me zoom out here uh, in different paths as you see and uh, they're all nicely connected with different use cases and uh, this is a complete design uh, and so this is one of the first things that is important. You can use the, uh, the feature of prototyping um, to involve testers at any time, but of course it's more effective if you use it when your design is somehow structured so that you can get better feedback. You're gonna see that in a minute. So um, for example, I have different flows here different use cases, curbside pickup, epipaths, um, just ordering coffee, I have my nice repair paths, I have interaction with buttons, I have a pretty complete design. So now that I have this, and again, if you're not sure how to do it, check out the links in the description, I can switch to prototype mode. So how do I do that? You see here, on the left hand side there is this uh, icon here if you over on it it will say prototype and if you click boom i'm in prototype mode now so what is prototype mode well it allows you to uh, turn your design with one click into an interactive mockup so let's do that you see that here on the top right my buttons changed so now i can invite tester and I can run an automatic test. So let's start with testers first. If you click this up, 
you're gonna have this very simple, straightforward uh, dialogue. You can just put an email and invite somebody to as a tester to this design and they're gonna get an email or you can copy the link and share it however you want. It's gonna work also on mobile devices if your preset, if your design uh, takes place on a mobile device, of course. And um, you can also test yourself. So I'm gonna try test yourself. Um, before I proceed, uh, just let me say this. Um, your testers do not need any license. They don't even need to be to have a Bot Society account to be testers. You can just send it to whoever you want at any time, uh, and they they will just uh, jump straight into it, and uh, they will test your design. What I mean, test your design. Let's take a look. So, I'm gonna click on test yourself. This is gonna bring me to the tester experience. Since I have different scenarios that are independent from each other. I am going to pick the scenario that I would like to test as a tester. I can pick. And so here I'm going to choose curbside pickup. So I'm going to click on that. Bot Society is going to show me the final user experience of the bot. And uh, this design starts with the user saying something. Hey there. So I'm just going to say that and press enter. And now the bot is gonna answer. Bear in mind, this is just a design. You didn't have to build any business logic behind it, any code. Um, there's not a natural language processing engine needed so far. The idea is that I want to get you from zero to testing this out as fast as possible. And so it doesn't really matter what the user says uh, in the first hi there example it will always always uh, proceed uh, and uh, in the same way which is the one that you designed and uh, the data that the user inputs well you can use it later it's very cool I'll show you all right so now the bot said on the virtual concierge for coffee bot da 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 what is your full name so I'm gonna write my full name And now, since I designed multiple scenarios, starting multiple paths, departing from this point, the tester, after uh, having typed his own message, can pick what is the scenario that most resembles what he has just typed. And again, the reason is that there is no engine yet, there is nothing built yet, this is just a design, and so the tester is going to pick what it feels like, um, you know, is the best option. So in this case, I have Dylan Wilczkowiak, uh, which is a name. And then I have another path, which is I have an issue with my pickup. So since I wrote my name, I didn't talk about issues. I'm going to pick the first scenario here. So I'm going to click on that. And let's see what the bot says now phone number and email address okay so I you know um, I'm not gonna write my actual I'm just gonna write my number I, I think I forgot the email let's see if this was somehow predicted looks like it was not I don't know my order number to be honest All right, as, it, as I said, the bot is just continuing. Now, the cool thing is that here you can see that the uh, bot uh, just proceeded, right? And so now um, we arrived to the end of the design and uh, now it's, it's stopping, it's asking me to stop. Now, what's interesting is I can now stop and go back to editing this design because uh, this is my design uh, and I'm, Bot Society knows that I'm logged in and you can see it in top here, this is my profile picture. And so uh, it's gonna allow me to do that. If you open this up with 
uh, an incognito window, or if you send it to somebody else that is not logged into Bot Society, let me show you how that looks. This is my incognito, which means Bot Society does not know who I am, if I'm logged in or not. And I just copy pasted the same link. Um, you will see that already that Bot Society is asking me to sign up if I want to, but as soon as this loads, it's gonna prompt me with the same tester experience. And I just wanna show you what happens uh, at the end uh, if a tester, which will probably be the case, um, is not logged in into Bot Society and does not have edit access. So I'm gonna pick curbside pickup again. I'm gonna speed this up. As you see, I'm trying different things. Okay, and as you see now, since I'm not logged in, Bot Society is blocking the experience and is asking the tester, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna run test again? Do you wanna sign up? So uh, you won't have your tester editing your design in any way. You're not giving them edit access unless you really want them to in another screen. This is just the tester access. All right, so I wanted to show you this. Um, and now, what happens now? Well, we um, sent our design out and we have got some data. So how can you use that? In other words, how do you see the results of your design? Now, if you go back to your design, and again, the way to do that is you click here on the prototype mode. Now you can see that I have a list here. And this list represents all the stuff that the tester input it during my tests. So let's let's go through it. So if I click on it, you see I'm gonna move around and check those out. So I'm gonna click on the first one. And you see that here I have an I there and I have an LO. And those are the two tests that I just run together with you right now. And you see that for each entry, you have three actions possible. You have a discard option, you have a create new, and you have an approve option. So what's the idea? The idea is that, well, let's start with discard. Discard, you just delete it. So this is useful if the data that the tester gave you is not really interesting and you don't need it. And if you click discard, it's just gonna go away so that it's not listed here. Uh, create new, it's gonna change your design. Note that everything that the tester have done did not change your design at all. The only changes here is those additional data that you see in prototype mode, but my design did not change, right? I decide, since I have edit access, I'm the designer of this, what to do with this data. So the first thing, the, sorry, the second thing is create new. Now with create new, what, what, what society is gonna do is it's gonna take this message, in this case, hi there, and it's gonna create a new path. Um, sorry, it's gonna add it at the end of this path. And the reason is, okay, maybe this is something that you wanna reuse in your design somewhere else. So this is useful if the user um, is, is expressing an intent that I did not foresee. It's not the case here because I think hi there works, um, but it's not really interesting because here I expect people to express this I'm outside for curbside pickup, right? And so I think what we're missing here in my design is a little bit of context. What I'm getting from my test data is that not saying anything to the user the moment that the user jumps in, it's not very useful. Even if they are there for the curbside, if I don't tell them anything, they will just say hello. And so what I can do here is I can change my design or I can approve those as utterances for this message. In other words, the last button, approve, is gonna add this message as an utterance or as a variation, you can think about it, 
of this message here. I can see the other utterances by clicking on it. The idea is that those training, those utterances will serve as training phrases for my natural language processing engine down the road, right? And so I'm not really sure what to do with those because those are not exactly expressing the need that I have here. Those are just random stuff. So another thing that you can do is uh, you can edit it. So if you click on this, I can just say, hey, I'm here for the pickup. Now this would be a valid utterance for this case. So I'm getting two things out of this. I'll probably need more utterances, but I also will need some sort of message to give the user more context. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add this here, I'm gonna click approve. Now this is added as utterance, you can see. And now I'm gonna improve this design since I just learned this. So how to do this? Well, I will need to go back to design mode. So I'm gonna click on edit here see this pencil icon on the left hand side I'm just gonna click here now I'm back to edit mode and I want to add a message on the bot side so um, I'll, I'll do something like this I'm gonna click on this message I'm gonna duplicate it because I want it to be slightly similar from the second message boom now I have two messages, and now I'm gonna drag and drop one of them at the start of the path. Okay, now I of course want this message to be different, so I'm gonna click on it and edit it. I'm Star, the virtual concierge from CoffeeBot. I'm here to help you with curbside pickups, coffee orders, and uh, other coffee related questions. I'm gonna click save. Now this is gonna be a little bit of context for my user. I would probably need if I was in a real life situation to iterate a little bit more on this message. I'm just gonna skim through it right now just to give you a little bit of idea. I also am gonna need to change this second message so that it's consistent. Um, and so I'm just gonna probably delete this. Now you see why I duplicated the message because I wanted actually to split the content of the message in two messages. I'm gonna click save, boom, that's it. All right, so we applied what we learned from the first part of the testing. You already see why this is useful, right? I'm improving my design based on my own self experience of the bot. Now imagine if you send this to 10 people, 20 people, your design is going to improve dramatically without having to, um, you know, build anything or uh, start to think about the logic of the bot. You're one step before you're just trying to imagine the best experience possible. All right, so let's go back. Uh, sorry, that was fast. You, I'm going to go back to prototype mode and see the rest of the feedback. So I'm going to switch back here. It's very fast to switch. You can go back and forth, back and forth. Um, so let's see on the second. So I think we've we've seen the first one. So it's finished. I'm gonna click on the second one here. Um, so Dylan, Vittorio, all those are fine because those are you know acceptable variations of the same um, bot. So oh sorry, of the same use case. Like I'm asking, what's your full name? Those all make sense. I'm gonna prove them. That's it, so now we have these four nice names. That's funny. All right, so let's go back to the next one. Okay, so here, th this is another piece of content. I'm not gonna edit my design again, because I think you, you get the idea. But here, what I'm seeing is, okay, I'm asking to the user to provide me phone number and email in the same question, but I don't see users doing that. They're just writing some numbers. So I may want to change this design and maybe split this message in two questions, something like that. Let's move on. Last question, what is your order number? One user said nine, which seems maybe acceptable, maybe not, depending what, how long is the order number usually. Nine seems a little bit 
small compared to my design, which was a five five numbers. Um, and then the other options, I don't know. Now this, uh, I didn't, I didn't foresee this option where the user doesn't know um, the order number, so it's not in my design, but it should be, right? Uh, I mean, we should build a dedicated repair path, some sort of way of uh, handling this situation. So the way to design it is I'm gonna click on create new, which I didn't show you yet. So you see that now it's a new message here. It's kind of cool, right? And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back to design mode and I'm gonna go on menu, file, new path. I'm gonna create a new path. Let me put it here for now. And I'm gonna call it um, no order number. And now I'm gonna drag and drop this message here. Boom. That's cool. And now I want to connect from here to here. Boom. Uh, I'm gonna link uh, in the description. You're gonna find a tutorial about connections and how to do this kind of stuff. It's very straightforward, but you know. Um, this is not what this tutorial is about, so I want to show you other stuff. Uh, but this is the idea, so like, um, check out the tutorial about building repair paths and stuff like that. The idea here is, with the prototype mode, you're going to find out, you're going to figure out scenarios where you, you're, you'll be like, oh, okay, it's best if I build a dedicated repair path here, and um, how to do that check out the other tutorials in the description. All right, so I'm gonna go back to prototype mode now. And uh, let's go. So you see here, those are numbers. Again, I didn't do anything about this. I'm just gonna discard it for now. I should act on this, but it's just too much stuff. I'm gonna discard this as well. What else do I got here? I have this nine. Also here, I should have another sort of uh, repair path for the situations where uh, the user gives me an order number, but it's invalid. And so I should click on create new and change this around. So this is the beauty of the prototype mode. So to recap, this first part of the tutorial, you create a good design that has some complexity to it. This is my recommendation. You don't have to, but it's more interesting. And then you can invite testers. You can invite as many testers as you want, and you'll be able to leverage this data to do three main things. Add more utterances or training phrases, change your design so that you can add new use cases fast, even before you build a bot, or just discard the data if it's not interesting. Now, I'll show you all of this. I'm gonna show you one additional feature that is still in beta. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but it's interesting. So I wanna share it with you. And the feature is automatic test. So what's the idea here? We're using OpenAI GPT-3. It's a generative model that generates um, language and acts that is very, very similar to what a human would do since it's been trained basically on the whole internet. Now, uh, it can go, as you can imagine, in many different directions. But what's interesting here is that we integrated that technology inside Bot Society for you, so you don't have to worry about machine learning or how OpenAI is doing its research. And we're gonna use that. Well, let, let me just show you. I'll click on Start Automatic Test. And now this will run. Now, what is happening behind the scenes is that we're asking OpenAI to act as your tester. So you're gonna have a tester at your disposal that it's automatic and that will act on your design. So boom, 
here you go. You see, I had no test data. Now I have a lot. And if I click on the first one, let me zoom in. You see that it's creating these utterances. Um, some of them are interesting. Some of them are not going to be that interesting, of course. Um, but check this out. So <laughs> um, here it's kind of realistic. The bot is asking um, the virtual assistant, what can I do for you? And uh, the GPT-3, my automatic tester said, I'd like to know whether you have a bathroom. Kind of realistic scenario that I didn't think about. Should I create a path for that? Just to, or even just a delight path, just to answer something if somebody asks for a bathroom. Um, here, another case, I think this also makes sense, right? I can help you order a coffee. Which kind of coffee would you like? Um, in my design, I'm coming up with uh, some sort of, uh, you know, flat white cappuccino types of coffee. But here the user is just saying something hot. So it's expecting me to suggest a specific coffee. I didn't think about that. That's interesting. Going to the next one. This looks okay. The user is just saying yes. I mean, this is great stuff, right? So feel free to experiment with uh, uh, the um, automatic test feature. Let me know what you think in the Bot Society forum. To get to the forum, just click here on the top right question, top right, and uh, uh, you're gonna find the link to our uh, community forum where you can ask questions. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for listening. If you have any doubts or questions, check out the links in the description below. You'll find the link to the forum again, where you can ask more questions to the team and the community. In the meantime, if you like the video, please give it, give it a thumbs up and uh, keep designing.